A god of death has just given you the power to kill anyone in the world by writing down their name, but a genius detective is predicting your every move and trying to end you. You'll have to manipulate friends and family and kill anyone who gets in your way to stay ahead, but you're only one mistake away from getting caught. The abilities of this notebook are not perfectly balanced, so I'm going to break down the mistakes made, how to exploit this notebook to its deadliest potential, and how to beat the death god himself and outsmart everyone in Death Note. This kid is about to become the deadliest serial killer in the world. Light here is a law student and is frustrated by the failing justice system in Japan. Looking for answers, he decides to hack into the police database and discovers that tons of criminals are being released and never punished for their crimes. But luckily, he'll soon have the power to fix this problem. Wanting to see for himself, he goes to a CD bar to spy on a criminal. This guy here is a child killer and starts bragging about how nobody could lock him up. Light is threatened at knife point by this gang and forced out of the bar. But outside, he finds a mysterious black book laying in the street. He takes it home and cracks it open, learning that this book has special powers. But with those powers come a set of five rules. The first rule is if he writes down someone's true name on its pages, that person will die in 40 seconds. Okay, most of us would be skeptical here because magic doesn't exist, but there's no way we're not going to test it out. The most tempting thing to do is write down the name of someone you might already know and hate, but this could associate you with the death. So I would make a hard rule to never kill anyone I've met before. The next mistake is to write down a public figure that you might dislike. The death would get way too much attention from the government and would be heavily investigated. The smartest way to test this is to kill someone who is already expected to die, so that in the off chance this is real, you aren't doing too much damage and it's not obvious that you did it. I would research who the world's oldest living person is and write their name down. They've had a good long life and everyone was expecting them to drop dead, so it's not going to be a surprise to anyone when they croak. Now, killing is fun and all, but the financial exploits of this book could be huge. We have a power that a lot of people would envy, so if you know your way around the dark web, you could offer assassinations and get filthy rich. We'll soon find out there are other rules to this book that can be exploited, and Light doesn't know them yet, but they could pay off big time. Now this brings us to the second rule of the death note. It will only take effect if the writer knows the person's face and thinks of it as they write their name down. Light here decides to test it out on a wanted killer announced on the news, and the next day, he reads an article about how that same man was found dead from a heart attack. It might be a strange coincidence, but he wants to confirm if this power is real. Later that night, he tracks down the child murderer from the bar and writes his name in the death note. 40 seconds later, the killer collapses to the ground, and Light here is shocked to see he's died from a heart attack, just like the first guy. This law student is now the most dangerous person on the planet, and with a taste for blood, he's just getting started. Okay, you might think that dying from a heart attack won't arouse suspicion, but Light here will soon find out that this is a serious lapse of judgment. For starters, Japan has one of the lowest coronary heart disease death rates in the entire world, partly because it has less problems with obesity, but if scores of healthy sushi-eating criminals start to die from heart attacks, this won't go unnoticed, and we have to be smart about how to use this power without getting caught. First of all, we need to make sure we understand the limits of this book. And before we go on a killing spree, I would do some heavy experimentation with this thing. If we filled a fax machine with death note paper, you could kill in public simply by sending an email without looking suspicious. If I wanted to fake a death, I might try writing in fading or erasable ink. These ideas might not work, but we'll learn what's possible. On his way back home, this demonic creature appears, introducing himself as the death god who dropped the book, and he's decided to let him keep it. The creature explains that only those who touch the death note can see him, and is neither his ally or enemy. He asks the monster what its name is, and is introduced to his new partner in crime, Ryuk. Alright, even though he seems nice enough, we can't assume this guy's on our side. If he's neutral, then he can ruin our plans or dox us at any given moment for his own amusement. This thing is a loose end you do not want to leave yourself vulnerable to. Obviously, writing his name down in the death book is a place to start, but he probably can't be killed and it would just piss him off. The best strategy here is to find out his motives and bribe him. I would be doing research to find out more about this creature that might exist in folklore. Light here doesn't know enough about him yet, but soon we'll learn more about this death god that we can take advantage of later. Light here decides to ramp things up and goes on a killing spree. No one knows who's committing these murders, but they start calling this vigilante Kira, which is the Japanese pronunciation of killer. 
Four months later, and the police department can't figure out the connection between all these dead criminals. They believe a virus might have killed the victims, but the captain here thinks they might have a serial killer on the loose. He goes to meet with the commissioner and learns that the brilliant detective L is on the case. He's analyzed the data and figured out that not only is Kira in Japan, but he's also a single person killing people through unnatural means. Okay, Light is going on a bender here, and it's not the smartest move. The pattern has already emerged, and it's getting way too much attention. But this has a solution, because the third rule of the death note is if the cause of death is written within 40 seconds of writing the person's name, it will happen. A sharp increase in heart attacks among a healthy population will show a pattern, so we need things to be as random as possible with no pattern behind it. The best way to do this is with dice. I would compile a list of criminals I wanted to kill, then a series of dice rolls would tell me who dies, how, and when. This gives us a limitless combination of deadly possibilities, removing any pattern to investigate, and they could all be pre-planned days or weeks ahead. Back at home, Light here is about to meet his match, and it could break everything. He tunes into an international broadcast where the Detective L announces to the world he's been tasked with helping uncover who Kira the Vigilante is. He describes the killer as predictable and immature. Taking it personally, Light here writes the detective's name into his death note and waits for him to die on TV. But when the man collapses from a heart attack, the real L reveals he's tricked Kira. He had a convict impersonate him and made it seem like the broadcast was shown internationally when it was actually restricted to Tokyo. In one big brain move, he's proven that Kira can kill people remotely and is also living in the Tokyo area. Okay. This L guy is an intellectual force to be reckoned with, but there's a way to turn the tables here by turning the government into public enemy number one. Death sentence in Japan is still active, and as much as 15 executions happen each year. This is a chess match of two extremely intelligent people, so using his own agencies to do your killing for you will force him to retreat and find a different plan to attack. Back home, Light has dinner with his family, and we find out his dad is the police chief in charge of the Kira investigation. Light offers to help on the case, but the man won't let his son get involved. Upset, he leaves the table and goes upstairs, where he hacks into the police reports and discovers that Detective L knows he's a student. He'll need to shake things up to throw them off his scent. Three days later, the police are shocked to find criminals are dying every hour and on a perfect schedule. L here deduces that Kira can also manipulate the times of death, but this change in strategy happened after they discovered he was a student. So the detective realizes that he has access to the team's information and they might have a mole. Okay, Light has just confirmed that he can access the police department's information, and it gives them an opportunity to take that advantage away. I would go analog with the entire investigation and take everything offline, but use the database as a decoy by planting misinformation to study how he reacts to it. If we already know that Kira is a student, then we need to narrow our scope to a specific school if we want to get closer. We've also seen that Kira lets his emotions get the better of him when he's under pressure. I would put false information on the police database that the dean of Kira's school is coming in to give a testimony in less than an hour. He'll see the fake report and just might kill the dean. So whichever dean is dead by the end of the day is the school Kira goes to. On his way home, Light suddenly notices that he's being followed. Somebody is onto him, and he needs to find out who this is before they catch him. The Death God asks how he will get the stalker's name, but he has a plan, and he's gonna use rule number four to get it. After writing the cause of death, details of the death should be written in the next six minutes and 40 seconds. The next day, he's riding the bus with his girlfriend, and the stalker from yesterday has followed them. This is no accident, and Light has a master plan. At the next bus stop, a man gets in and puts a gun to the driver's head. Light tells his stalker that he'll stop the criminal, but the man tells him not to risk it, revealing he's an FBI agent and gets him to back down. Light here drops a piece of paper on the floor and the hijacker picks it up, and after reading it, points his gun at him, but is shocked when he sees Ryuk standing in front of him. He tries shooting the monster, but the bolts go straight through. Freaking out, the man urges the driver to stop and he gets off the bus, only to get hit by a car. This whole thing was an elaborate setup to learn more about this FBI agent, using rule number four to make the criminal hijack the bus and get him killed. Okay, this changes everything. If we can use this death note to control people's actions, I'm using this to get rich or die trying. We could use this on a billionaire, making them write us into their will for a full inheritance just before they die. Let's be honest, if you're going to kill people, you might as well take their money while you're at it. Back home, Light thinks that L sent the FBI agent after him, and there might be more than one. He knows he can't kill the agent stalking him, as he'll be the prime suspect, but if all agents were to die, then he would be safe. Ryuk is surprised at Light's bloodlust and starts to look concerned. There's a lot more to this death god than meets the eye. Okay, this is interesting. Ryuk should be happy here because as we learned, every death will extend his life. 
clearly, we don't know everything about this guy. And if he's keeping secrets from us, we need to find some leverage over him to make sure he won't screw us over. Now, we saw in the bus that physical injuries cannot hurt this creature, so killing him is out of the question. But blackmail and bribery might still be on the table. Threatening to destroy this book might get us answers he doesn't want to give, so we might be able to use this to get him to do our bidding. We just have to be careful not to piss him off. The next day, the FBI agent leaves his hotel and heads to the subway. He's followed by his fiance Naomi here and doesn't know that she's on the train watching him. He takes a folder left on a rack and finds a message from Kira who knows him by name and wants to talk with him through this transmitter. With little choice, he activates the walkie-talkie and listens. Light demonstrates he's the real Kira by having the man next to the agent die from a heart attack. He then asks him how many other agents are in Japan, and he's told there are 11 others, but he doesn't know their names. Light then asks the agent to write his leader's name inside this box on the first page. He's fallen for the fifth rule. Even if you do not actually possess the death note, anyone can use it if you can recognize the person in his or her name. After writing it, he's told to access his computer as he'll receive all 12 IDs from his boss. He's then instructed to write their names in the remaining boxes. This was Light's brilliant plan. He tricked the agent into writing everyone's names on a page of the death note, and with it, he just sent the death sentences of all the other agents, as they all start dropping dead. When he gets up at the next station, he collapses from a heart attack and looks back to see Light standing in front of him. The agent's fiance rushes to save him, but it's too late, as Light's train pulls out of the station. He's won for now, but he's just created another enemy, and she will be much harder to beat. Okay, that was a genius way to extract the information, but he also made some mistakes here. First of all, going on the train was a terrible idea because now they will be scraping through the security footage of the incident, and this hooded figure would be a prime suspect. You could easily be tracked back to your home and caught. Now, if the agent is already being manipulated, there's no purpose to meet him on the train. I would have brought him to a much more controlled and isolated environment away from the public to make sure there were no cameras and nobody was following him. Personally, I wouldn't be killing FBI agents at all because it keeps revealing that you have insider information. This narrows down the suspects to people with connections to the police, and if your father is the leader of the investigation, then you will stay on the suspect list no matter what. The best way to throw out the stalker and mislead the FBI investigation without killing them is to set up a false confession. I would make two criminals march into the police station and one of them declares that he is Kira. When they ask for proof, the second criminal will have a heart attack, making it look like the first criminal killed them with his mind. Then write in the death note that he cannot speak, eat, or drink water when he's detained by the police until he dies. It's an elaborate con that could go wrong, but at the very least, it buys us time to plan further ahead and cover our tracks without being followed. Later that day, the police chief announces to his investigation team that Kira is now killing people who aren't criminals and gives them the option to quit. Knowing how dangerous this has gotten, almost every single member leaves until only six are left. The police express their frustration for the detective and demand he shows his face if he wishes to continue working the case. Accepting their demand, the liaison takes the investigation team to a hotel where they meet the detective in person, and he is not who they expected. They all introduce themselves by name, and he chews them out for it. If he was Kira, he would have all their names, and they'd all be dead. They've been on the losing end of this battle, but L has a new strategy that he thinks can stop Kira for good. Okay, this guy's a strange dude, but there's one detail here that tells me Kira is screwed. This guy only eats candy, and at first glance, this looks like a weakness, but it's not. Al here is using a high caloric intake diet to stay awake and alert for as many hours as possible. The brain uses the most calories in the body, where even a stoic professional chess match can burn the same amount of calories as running a marathon. Crab fishermen also do this when they have only a three-day window to hunt for crab, and they need to stay awake as long as possible to maximize their time. Al is looking for an advantage even in his diet, and it tells me he's thinking on more levels than Kira is at the moment to ensure he doesn't miss any opportunity to catch his killer. Later, the dead agent's fiance, Naomi, has taken matters into her own hands. She finds information on the bus hijacking from the newspaper and meets the driver who mentions that her fiance was seen arguing with a young man, but he disappeared before the police arrived. Meanwhile, Elle watches the surveillance tapes of the agent's death and finds an important detail in the footage. With one glance, he's figured it all out. He informs the team that he's narrowed down the list of suspects to the families in the police department, including the police chief's son, Light. He knows that the FBI agent was tracking Light and knows the agent's wife used to be part of the FBI, and since she followed him, she must have felt there was something suspicious going on. Suspecting Kira was on the subway, Elle arranges to plant cameras in the police chief's home and keep watch over Light for seven days. 
Now, this is all well and good, but it's also completely unnecessary because Japan has a stop and frisk policy. They're super polite about it, but if this kid has proven he can kill someone at any given hour of the day, then it's either done in his mind or done through an object on his person. If he's frisked, he will either run away, which lets you arrest him, or they would find the book. This solution takes no resources other than a well-placed beat cop. The next day at college, Light here is greeted by his girlfriend and the woman he saw at the subway. She gives him a business card and admits she's the fiance of the agent that was killed and thinks Light here killed him. He denies the accusation and his girlfriend backs him up. Light here takes out a piece of paper from the death note and writes down the woman's name on it, but nothing happens to her. The woman warns him that he can't kill her because she gave him a fake name. Okay, this woman is dangerous. Her fiance has been killed and she has nothing left to live for. Desperate people who want vengeance are the kinds of people who will burn the whole place down just to prove a point. And that makes for a very dangerous loose end that we need to deal with the right way. The only way out of this is to satisfy her bloodlust. I would find a criminal to manipulate, tell her he is Kira, then the cause of death is that the manipulated criminal gets shot by the woman and killed. This gives enough emotional trauma for her to believe that she's gotten vengeance for her fiance's death by killing the man herself. Later that day, Light returns home and discovers that his room has been broken into. Earlier, he placed pencil lead in the hinge of his door and it's now broken. Now Light knows he's under surveillance and can't do anything with the death note or Ryuk until he tricks them. The police chief is told Light will be left alone if his son does nothing suspicious and there are still more deaths. The college student still isn't cleared of being a murderer just yet. Okay, this looks like Light here is cornered, but they've played right into his hands. First of all, you can't build a case on this because you can't prove a negative. If no deaths happened during his surveillance, that's circumstantial evidence at best, and it isn't enough to arrest him or even take him to court. This is a fool's errand, but there's another massive oversight here. Elle should have considered that this kid is a law student whose father is the chief of police, and he should know that according to Japanese law, under Article 23 of the 1999 Act for Wiretapping in Criminal Investigation, the suspect must be notified by the police. If they don't, under Article 30, light can legally sue them for breaking the law, and they'll be forced to leave him alone. He had a great opportunity here to sabotage their whole operation, and he didn't take it. By day 7, the surveillance team is still observing the college student, but when breaking news about an arrested child murderer is reported, they realize Light isn't even watching. Moments after, the murderer dies of a heart attack while in custody, and Light hasn't moved a muscle. They're convinced it's not him, but Light has tricked them all, because inside his chip bag is a miniature TV playing the news and a piece of paper from the death note. With the college student cleared of suspicion, Elle receives a call from the FBI agent's fiance who claims she will risk her own life to prove that Light is Kira. And the first part of her plan is to make his girlfriend call him to meet at the art gallery. The surveillance team watches through the cameras as Light enters the building. He sees the woman holding his girlfriend hostage and is told to confess that he is Kira. He begs the woman to let her go and insists that he's not Kira, but the woman reveals her real name and dares him to kill her. He slowly pulls out a pen to write her name down, but stops when he hears police sirens in the distance. His girlfriend breaks free and runs to him, but gets shot. Light mourns his girlfriend's death and puts on a good show, but it turns out this was his plan all along. At the subway, he noticed her folder had a cross on it, and he traced it to the church where she was getting married. He found her name in the records and wrote down in the death note that she would lure Kira to the museum. He then wrote that his girlfriend would be shot to death without specifying by whom. Since the woman was the only one in the room with a gun, the death note caused her to kill his girlfriend. When his father comes to take him home, he asks if he can join the Kira investigation so that he can get revenge on Kira. That's when Elle appears and approves his membership. These two masterminds are just getting warmed up, but they both don't realize a new player is about to join the game. In another part of the city, a famous young woman is being followed by her delusional stalker who wants to kill her. She's cornered with no one to help, but the man suddenly collapses from a heart attack and a death note falls right next to him. There's more than one book, and things are about to get way more interesting. But what do you think? How would you be death note? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.